It's not to say that you don't or shouldn't make plans or shouldn't have an idea or shouldn't have a plan. Um, but I think the really important thing is to build skills along the way that yeah. allows for adaptability. So And a mindset, right? Yeah. Like you, you've got to be okay with change. any plan that doesn't take into account adaptability is doomed to fail. It's just going to disappoint you. Especially in today's society, right? Exactly. In this world, you know, some of you who are studying now are going to be doing things in five years, ten years that exactly. don't exist don't now. Exist. Right? Yeah. Um, accounting is not going to look like what it does now. No. no. So I think Richard has always been someone who is fascinated, interested, and passionate in and about everything from architecture to yeah. to art and you know Greek philosophy to you call me horses, a squirrel, don't you? to um, economics and business and computers and whatever, which is which is fascinating. Um, when you call your squirrel when you can't sit still, the idea that accountants are one type of personality, mm. I think is incredibly obsolete. Not everyone is going to find their passion on day one. Mm. Not everyone is going to start first year accounting and feel this is what I was meant to do with my life. Mm. Uh, most people who study accounting are not going to do accounting classically. Uh, you know, there are so many different spheres and avenues mm. and types of things that you can do, which increase and change, you know, on an almost daily basis. So I find I've always been a little bit more narrow-sighted or na not narrow-minded, but a little bit more focused or I always wanted to be an accountant and it was the same thing. Whereas Richard is completely the opposite and wanted to do everything, mm. has the most fascinating history. Um and continues to find things that he's passionate about that change and develop mm. and evolve over time. And the next season of, you know, the next season of your life mm. doesn't really look like the last one, which doesn't make the last one wrong and doesn't make the next one yeah. wrong. Uh, it's an evolution. It's a change. And your skills and your qualification mm. uh, form a foundation for that. But that's not who you are it doesn't define no. you and it doesn't shove you into a small you know small little narrow well it's an interesting thing if you especially in south africa when you when you meet so we obviously have a lot of chartered accountants and lawyers and you know you you kind of grow out a social circle very yeah. much based on your, your qualification yeah. and your peers and most chartered accountants you'll say oh so tell me about yourself it starts with i'm a chartered accountant yeah. And it, to be honest, it's, that's something that's, I think, is uh, we, possibly a little unhealthy. Um, <coughs> when your biggest self-value comes from two, four letters behind your name, that, that says a lot your to me. Your definition of yourself. Yeah, that your definition. When you define yourself by your qualification, um, that's always something that scratched at the back of my head. Yeah. Um, I think it's hard not to when you've spent uh, so seven, many years, years right, yeah. obsessing about yeah. it. It's it's the biggest accomplishment that mm. you'll ever have. Um, so to, to some extent, you you had to be obsessed with it in order yeah. to get it. So I think it's natural. It is natural, but I, I agree that we need to give some thought to what it does it define yeah. you. Like, who are you outside of? Get qualified. And it's a bit of an anti-climax. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, actually, you've I'm just I'm not started. any smarter than I was yesterday. Yeah, you, 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 now what? You still got to get a job. You still yeah. got to, you know, you get a job and you realize you actually know nothing about the real world. Yeah. Um, but what you do have is you have a good foundation. I think the, whether it's studying to be a CA or a lawyer or a doctor, or whatever, it teaches a lot of structure and self-discipline. Yeah. And there's something about going through something really tough. Mm. Right. That's why, you know, from my side, when I you know, look to employ or partner with people, if I have someone from a big university who was a full-time student yeah. versus someone who struggled for an extra year or two, did a part-time, yeah. I'll often look at the person part-time more favorably, favorably. Yeah. maybe because it's my bias. That's what I went through. But someone who survived the hardship has usually grown more. Um, but again, that's a big generalization. Um, I just... 
think that if we could have more of that mindset while studying. Yeah. You know, if you don't, there's other careers other than chartered accounts. Yeah, yeah. It's not a be all you know, If you aren't going to make it and you decide to do something else or an entrepreneurial yeah. option comes up or, you know, options travel. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean like that if you're not CA, a CA, you're going to be homeless on the street, right? Yeah. Um, but a good basic understanding of the skill set within the CA qualification is great. Yeah. Um, and chartered accountants around the world experience that. 